I need to see your face! Show it to me, Dwight! Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and today we'll be looking at Stephen King's The Night Flyer, 1997. Adapted from Stephen King's short story, this story of horror follows a reporter who pursues a story that might be one of his most bizarre works ever. There is a serial killer stalking isolated airports at night by private plane, perhaps a creature that is not even human. The themes that King explores in his books were almost endless. Vampires, rabid dogs, psychotic killers, and pyromaniacs were all on the table, as were ghosts, telekinesis, and biological warfare. However, Stephen King doesn't have very many vampires in his repertoire, aside from the vampire-centric Salem's Lot. Another of his most well-known and best stories is The Dark Tower, which also features vampires. As published in King's short story collection, Nightmares and Dreamscapes, The Night Flyer is adapted and directed by Mark Pavia. So let's dive deeper into this lesser-known horror flick. Before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Evil has a flight plan. The Night Flyer, 1997. Inside View's ace reporter Richard Dees is given a new assignment. There is some sicko on the loose calling himself Dwight Renfield, who is flying from one desolate airport to another, killing and drinking the blood of those who are there, but he has not yet been caught. Dees, however, sees this as a waste of time and suggests that Merton Morrison hand the assignment to cub reporter Catherine Blair. In King's The Dead Zone, Richard Dees is the reporter who attempts to interview John Smith. The different Dees bylines that Catherine reads are all references to other King stories, and the town of Derry is even mentioned at one point. Catherine is able to tap into a network of local law enforcement agencies on her computer the following morning, and finds three cases that meet the Batty Flyer's M.O. So Morrison once again asks Dees to handle the case. Dees agrees this time, and Catherine is clearly not pleased. Taking advantage of his own plane, Dees tracks the trails back. Taking photos and piecing together the story as he goes, Dees follows the story through the backwaters of America. Its gloomy, moonlit airfields play a big part in most creepy scenes, and there's even a dog cameo that brings to mind Cujo to some degree. Despite the increased tension, even a vampire wearing a full Bell Lugosi-like cape and looming out of the fog seems more like a matter of course then a bad idea at a Halloween party. An interesting parallel exists between the metaphorically bloodthirsty journalists and the literally bloodthirsty vampire. The editor even says at one point, God, I hope he kills more people. In this way, the film runs with black humor that's quite low-key. The Night Flyer is overtaken by Dees during a violent thunderstorm, and he quickly learns that he has misjudged his quarry indeed. It is a vampire that is doing all the killings. Dees is left horrified by the sight of the Night Flyer, who casually empties his bladder into an airplane urinal. Dees drinks Renfield's blood during his last encounter with him, causing a horrific hallucination. A pair of police officers command Dees to stop swinging blindly, and he sees various dead bodies come back to life and attack him in the climactic hallucination. In this hallucination, he appears covered in blood, almost like he's slaughtered a bunch of people. However, Dees is in a frantic frenzy. When he runs at the cops, he is soon shot and killed. Dees locked Catherine in a cupboard to ensure that he got the story, just for her to pin all the murders on him and receive that career break that she always wanted. In a similar way of how vampires are born bloodthirsty journalists, in turn, create more bloodthirsty journalists. In exchange for that front page, Catherine consumes Dee's story and wrecks his reputation. The film was shot in just 30 days by Mark Pavia, who actually completed it one day early. As a whole, the tight production schedule doesn't come across on screen. Despite being designed for a theatrical release, The Night Flyer premiered on HBO before hitting theaters a year later. However, it wasn't a success at the box office, but after all these years, the movie has become something of a cult classic. The story's unusual framing and the monster design contributed greatly to its popularity. The film stands out for its practical effects, done by some incredible artists. The film contains numerous graphic images, including severed limbs, severed faces, and even torn bodies. It's pleasing to see that the camera doesn't hesitate to show just as much gore as they want, and the makeup 
holds up against the extended viewing time. With its focus on a vampiric killer and the effects he has on his victims, the film gives off a nice creepiness. In one particular chilling scene, a woman dressed in a pregnoir waits on the steps of her home while the killer attacks and devours her husband. After that, she goes inside and welcomes the monster into her bedroom. When Miguel Ferrer is not on screen, scenes like this have a dreamlike quality that gives the film a much needed boost. Throughout cinema, it has always been true that interesting characters are more important than likable characters. The Night Flyer certainly follows that path, with one of the more unsavory characters you're likely to come across. It's about as charming as a rattlesnake to deal with Richard Dees, an unpleasant, churlish prick who will do anything for a story. Miguel Ferrer plays him so well that we just can't look away. His sleaze is captivating. It's impossible not to track along for his duration of the Night Flyer, even as he lies, cheats, and grimaces his way throughout it all. He isn't the worst character of the film, though, so he's in a sense the unlikely hero of the story, for lack of a better word. A vampire who flies Cessna Skymaster is a wild enough concept to support a feature film. By focusing on Richard D's moral downfall, time and attention are diverted from the storyline. In the same way, the transition of Dwight Renfield into a bloodsucker is symbolic of Richard's transition into a different kind of vampire, one who feeds on other people's pain and tragedy. In the absence of enough running time, neither story arc is as complete as it should be. This is an interesting film, primarily because of Miguel Ferrer's performance as slimy Richard Dees, and for the scenes that feel like a true tribute to Val Luton's visual storytelling skills. Even as it stands, though, it's still a fun and gory thriller. Vampiric Serial Killer Dwight Renfield Stephen King's horror short story The Night Flyer features a vampiric serial killer named Dwight Renfield. It is unknown if Dwight Renfield is actually his real name, as well as what his past was before his killing spree. Renfield flies a Cessna Skymaster 337 which is an indication that he was once a skilled pilot. The film shows Dwight carrying a photo album on his plane, which is full of photos of not only himself, but also of someone who was possibly his wife, before he became a vampire. Both human and vampire versions of Dwight Renfield appear in the film. In both cases, he wears a black cloak, similar to Bela Lugosi's Dracula. The human form of Dwight is that of a handsome man with long, shoulder-length black hair and grayish eyes. As he truly is, Humanity is gone. His only human characteristic is his long, shoulder-length black hair. In addition to looking shriveled and wrinkled, his pale skin appears to be leathery in appearance. He has a horrifying mixture of human and bat-like physical characteristics on his face. Having a bat-like head and a mouth filled with large fangs, his head's form is especially unique among vampires in that he bears a massive fang on both the top and bottom parts of his mouth. This makes him a particularly dangerous predator. Dwight Renfield is exceptionally fast and agile, especially for being a vampire. His fast movements barely register on the human eye in the film. Two large holes on the side of each of the victim's neck are the result of his feeding. Human-like in the warped sense, his hands are adorned with long fingers and razor-sharp claws, with hair growing from the back of each hand. The fact that Dwight Renfield is a vampire makes it no surprise that he is sensitive to sunlight. Sun exposure is deadly to him, so he must rest in complete darkness during the daytime to avoid being exposed to the sun. The film suggests that Dwight Renfield dislikes his status as a vampire and the murders that he commits because of his thirst for blood, despite his extremely brutal methods of feeding. Because his vampire curse prevents him from seeing himself in a mirror, he is often seen smashing any mirrors that he comes across to avoid being reminded of the monster that he's become. Is there going to be a Night Flyer 2? Stephen King's The Night Flyer is a highly underrated adaptation. Its cancelled sequel almost explored the origin of its central vampire. While the 1997 movie adaptation of The Night Flyer largely follows King's short, there are a few changes made to add enough material for a feature-length version, such as adding the character of a competing reporter named Catherine Blair. The Night Flyer received bad reviews from critics and bombed at the box office as well. But since then, it's become quite a cult classic. And if King had his way, well, it would have become a franchise. The Night Flyer had established a cult following by the mid-2000s. A sequel was on the way, and producer Richard P. Rubenstein 
recruited the Night Flyer director and creator Mark Pavia to pen it. As a result, Rubenstein was very pleased with the result, and he sent it directly to King himself, who, contrary to his usual dislike for sequels to his work, was actually pleased with it as well. As a result, King joined Pavia in co-writing the script. King and Pavia's Night Flyer 2, Fear of Flying, was supposed to be a direct sequel to Night Flyer. It focused on Catherine Blair and examines the origins of Dwight Renfield, a vampire who used an alias inspired by Dracula while traveling between airports. Since Richard D's character was killed at the end of the original Night Flyer, he probably wouldn't have made an appearance. It would seem that King's involvement in the film would have been enough to get it made. But unfortunately, that was not the case. Night Flyer 2 was shopped around to different studios by Rubenstein, Pavia, and King as well. But no one was willing to finance the production, seeing it as a financial risk despite the relatively small budget, necessary by Hollywood standards. In today's media environment, however, with the constant drive of original streaming content, Night Flyer 2 would probably have received the green light very quickly. However, at the moment, the Night Flyer sequel seems unlikely to ever be made. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For marvelous videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.